All right, hello, welcome to Ben's OP Game Show, recorded live, very obviously, at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, twitch.tv slash thegamefanatics, every Friday. I said that kind of jumbled and out of order. On this week's show, you want to take a look at the top five worst 3D platformers of all time, and I intentionally made this list to piss people off, uh, because why should I highlight the best? I thought of thinking about it. The top five best 3D platformers of all time. I don't think I can make five, so I decided to do the worst instead. And that's in honor of Ukulele, which I will be reviewing right after that, and then talking about Bayonetta on the PC. But first, let's take a look at some of the top stories of the week, the biggest news, and there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of Star Wars I could talk about, but instead, let's talk about the... Oh, I forgot to change all my things. So there we're going to do that instead. So the biggest thing to me this week was the Nintendo Direct 412 talking about all their random nonsense and it was billed at least I thought it was billed as a Switch Direct uh, focusing on ARMS and Splatoon and, and a few other things right and we ended up getting a lot of other things as you can see this this is just the direct feed haha <laughs> of the direct and it's kind of worrying to me the first five minutes of this 20 minute thing are about the 3DS and let's kind of I'm gonna go over this I got this list from GameSpot yeah, GameSpot, not GameStop. I'm kind of talking about all these games and, and a list of them. So we get Hey Pikmin, which is what literally no one wants. I'm a huge Pikmin fan. I don't even know if I'll buy this. This is not what I want from Pikmin. Whatever. We got games like this is Beyond Oasis or, or some somewhere around an Oasis. There's Yokai Watch 2 another one like it's the third version of how pokemon has done that in the past with like um crystal and whatever yellow metopia we got a bunch of kirby games it's still coming out on the 3ds it's nice that they're still supporting it but it really isn't that great and then once we start looking into the switch the outlook is a little stranger too we have mario kart 8 deluxe coming out on april 28th we have minecraft that's cool, but it's it's Minecraft. This is like 10 years old now. Uh, Sonic Forces, which is a new 3D Sonic game. Sonic Mania, which is coming to everything. And then a bunch of ports of games that are a year old, maybe not six months old. You know, not exactly. I mean, I mean they, they spent time to talk about Disgaea 5, which is cool, but I mean, whatever. Puyo Puyo Tetris, cool, but... We're really we're really scraping the barrel here, and I understand it's it's fun to take these games on the go whenever you want and kind of detach it and do its own thing. But is it really sustainable after we get off the hype from Zelda and a few of these indie games and and get into the meat of the console? Can it be sustained by ports of years old games? And I, I don't know. It seems like the answer is yes. To me, the answer should be no. Like, that's crazy. That's absolutely absurd that these games from over a year ago are now all of a sudden better on the Switch. Like, that doesn't even make sense. But maybe the Switch isn't exactly for me in that regard. Um, in other games we're getting, like Payday 2, which I think is five years old now at this point. Um, it, I mean, it's a very successful game. That's great. Whatever. Namco Museum, Bazaar. They're putting out a Switch dock into physical stores for whom or is it for who i don't know i don't care this direct while well done and like super fast i love how it's just game 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 like that's really focus on it that's great the presentation of everything is great but i think the words and the games it's showing aren't exactly what i'm looking for or what i think a lot of people are, are looking for with the switch like we got a bunch of stuff for ARMS. We got a bunch of stuff for Splatoon 2. And then a bunch of question marks. And I, and I understand there's going to be more later at E3. But this this really, there's no virtual console. There's not even a hint of virtual console. This E3 is, is the more we get presentations like this, the longer or the shorter <laughs> the time to E3 that we still don't know much, the more worried I become about this. Because it starts to hinge so much on E3 for them, to me. Uh, there, is a, a, there is a big zeitgeist in gaming right now 
popular gaming culture uh, of the Switch being awesome and Zelda being incredible and all this. Now, that's true. That's, that's great. But is it really? Is this, like, are the sales going to start slowing down? if there's nothing here like you're getting the diehards you're getting the people who are in it for games like games 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 give me the new zelda give me the new whatever this is a cool new piece of tech i want that but six months out what's going to happen right now they're in a better place than they were with the wii u i remember the wii u launch i remember i didn't buy it at launch and i bought it a week i bought it two days after which should tell you anything about the switch uh, the difference between those two so it's doing very well we got some sales numbers and, I, and they were they're very good that's fine is it sustainable on a lineup like this i mean i've been talking for a couple minutes we're still not even through the 3ds portion of this and all of this presentation the 3ds portion of it i'm sitting here thinking i'd play that on my switch and it really, it really is so obvious to me. It, they have to kill the Switch. They are the 3DS. They have to kill it for the for the Switch to succeed. Like they have to. You can't keep putting so much stuff here on the 3DS and just going like yeah and some other things. Like they highlighted Monopoly. Monopoly is like a hundred years old. Everything has Monopoly. I, would Sony put Monopoly in their presentation? Like imagine if. If Sony was like, oh, we're going to reveal the PlayStation 4 Pro. And you know what one of the titles is going to be? Not at launch, but three, four months later, Monopoly. They wouldn't waste a second on Monopoly, but we we do here. And, and I guess that's cool, but it's also really goofy and, and weird. Like, you're highlighting Monopoly. That doesn't... That doesn't really evoke a lot of excitement or, or confidence in you for me. Remains to be seen. And, uh, I, I mean, I need to go and see what the chat's saying, because I got, everything's broken. There's no chat. Okay, good. I'll fix this later. But it's just, it's such a strange thing to me. I feel like they could be doing more. They should be doing more. 16 Kirby games. Does Kirby need a game every year? Does Kirby need a game that's not on the Switch? Does the 3DS need any new game announcements? Because there were several from Nintendo not like, oh, we're getting Monster Hunter, which came out in Japan six months ago or whatever. New games from Nintendo. Does this, the 3DS need these new games or can we get them onto the Switch instead? How long is the end life of 3DS going to be? Because if it doesn't end at the end of this year, I think that's bad. I think that's really bad and, and that, that hinges them into going and making another 3DS. Or maybe there was a rumor I saw today of a mini Switch or something like that. That's I don't think a bad a, a good path. That is a bad path to follow. It remains to be seen. But I think this direct, while it's it's content I wasn't super enthused about, I think its presentation presentation was <laughs> really good. Great format. This is exactly what they should be. This was what the um, the Nindies one was kind of like this too. They do a good job with that, and I think if they kind of focus all this energy in the same way they did here but on e3 and on the switch really hard hitting here's mario here's smash here's a bunch of stuff right that's good that's positive that's the nintendo i want to see and also virtual console especially with the cancellation of the nes classic i think that's the canary in the coal mine a little bit here um also i just don't think they wanted to produce it anymore there's a whole lot of things going on with this remains to be seen and well, I guess we'll just have to wait until E3. We'll also have to wait for me to fix my little side things because I'm a moron and I knew I forgot something and I found what it was. Also, we got a ton of amiibo and good God, can we stop? There's too many. I can't. I can't with all these amiibo. You're killing me. I'm dead now because you killed me. And now I have to fix all those, uh, <laughs> all those things. Ba da ba 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 da da ba da ba 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 da. Oh, 
Oh, who did that? Was it me? Oh, it certainly wasn't me. Unfortunately, I have to type all this out, and it's super annoying because I forgot it. Because I'm dumb. I don't know how unfortunate it was. I'm done with it already. There we go. Now we're back. I know how things work. You didn't miss anything. So I decided, in honor of ukulele, I decided to take a look at some of my least favorite favorite 3D platformers, and I kind of hid the, the background here, so it's all black and all weird, to surprise and to uh, kind of talk about that here. Um, so number five, let's just start start off right at the bat. Number five is Banjo Tooie. I I really don't like Banjo Tooie at all. Uh, I think there's there's a lot of problems with it. It's it's a fine game. But it's really infuriating, and by the end of it, I kind of wanted to just kill the stupid animals that were involved, the bird and the bear. Uh, the worlds are too big. They're this weird labyrinth of platforms and doors that go weird places, and they don't tell you where you're going, and they have all these puzzles that I'm like, I don't even know what they're trying to tell me to do. I don't get it. I don't like it. I, I don't think it's fun at all to, to do. Um it's just a giant maze like you'd be in this cave level there's this one cave mining level where i mean it's just a cave mine and that's that's it but you're wandering around and you can't tell where you are in the cave because it's just these brown textures everywhere and this is even this right here is the updated uh 360 version of the game that i'm playing off of rare replay and it's, it's a mess. Like, I don't know where the fuck I am. And the, the levels just get bigger and bigger. And they're filled with nothing. They changed one of the things like that they I hated. They changed the notes. And they made them into five packs of notes. Well, fuck you and your five packs of notes. I'm tired of that shit, too. Okay. So that's number five. Number four is also Banjo-Tooie. Fuck this stupid game. They give you all your abilities right at the beginning. And then they start adding in these dumb ones. And here's the problem with all this, too. They give you all the abilities, so you forget which ones you have, but like halfway through the game, you're not even sure what you're supposed to do. They split the pair apart and give them super annoying and way too convoluted things. Like, oh, now, now Kazooie can do a triple jump when he does the whatever, my Bob. And it's like, what the fuck's going on? It's so just convoluted. Convoluted is the term to describe Banjo Tooie's moveset and how it's like. Let me get uh, your beak busters down spin thing, and now we're going to upgrade it even more. And you can use this on the nuts that you randomly find here, but you can't use it here, but you can use it here. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? You guys ruined everything. This is the same thing. People complain about, oh, in every Metroid game, you have to collect all your stuff again. And I'm sitting here on the sideline going, that's the fun of it. That is the fun part of a Metroidvania game is collecting all your garbage over and over again and going back backtracking and finding things like oh i have the double jump now i can do this instead they give you everything and it's all garbage here's 16 more things oh and, and half the moves you learn are are a bullshit fps mechanic or or another grenade type that's what the game needed it needed six different types of eggs to shoot out your anus that's what the game needed thanks rare perfect flawless just flawless work there unbelievable and they might be thinking you might be thinking are they all banjo tooie no they're not all banjo tooie because every once in a while there is a worse game than banjo tooie and uh in this instance while i wait for the game to load the youtube video to load the game of the loading is this one's actually notoriously bad this is sonic 2006 this game is terrible. This game is really bad. It's so bad, and it's so baffling what happened. So they, they released a demo for this game, right? And 
And I didn't even finish the demo. I think I, I don't think I did. Because it's so bad. You can't even run in a straight line. Like, look at what's happening here. This might be the best part of the game. What the fuck even occurred there? How does this happen? I, I have to wonder, because of this demo, and because I'm a huge Sonic fan, I mean, I played that that one they released after Generations that was only on the Wii U. That's that shitty one. Not Colors, the other one. It was bad. Um, what, what the fuck is going on? It's, you, can't, you can't even play this game. It's skipping and jumping all over the place. Anyway, the demo. That was what I was saying with the demo. It's real. It's a real bad demo. Why did you release it? Why did they release this demo? <laughs> did anyone think this demo was good? That it was going to increase sales oh we made a demo i think people want to play our game they made we made a demo no no one wants to play your game now it's just, it doesn't work at all this game does not work at all and it's bad game this is a this is actually a bad game unlike banjo 2 which is just infuriating this is a bad game look at sonic he's out of control he's out of his g does, is the game slow or is the game fast can we decide no, but it's like it's four frames per second. No, it's too much. It's too much. So now we get now we get into the the meat of it. This is uh, number two on the list of worst three D platformers of all time, according to me, or worst three D plats as when you let you type when you don't have enough space, or just worst if you look at the other uh, the other screen there. And it's uh, Mario 64. I, I don't think it's a very good game. I think there's a ton of nostalgia looking back at this game. And I picked this part in particular to highlight exactly why. This is still pretty early in the game. It's kind of cut off a little bit. doesn't matter. This is terrible. This sliding on this hill thing almost made me want to quit playing the game. This level is garbage. Look, he's, he, even this guy, he's doing like a speed run or some shit. He's flying all over the thing. It's bad, and then you die there, and it knocks you back to the, to the beginning of the thing, and I gotta jump back in. Oh, that's fun, Nintendo. Great job for making it fun. Oh, and also, all those little stars you pick, you can only get one star, right? So if you find all what, six red coins and you get a star, and you collect that star, you're bumped, you're snapped like the Switch, bumped right back out to the open, the open world, the overworld little castle. Why? There are uh, more stars here. Why can't I get them all? Why are you making me do the same level over and over? Oh, it's a little different now. Is it? Is it a little different now? I'm starting in the same spot. This guy's moved around a little. I mean, the game doesn't control very well. It's like muddy, weird honey man jumping and hopping around. Uh, I've tried to play this game. I really have. But it's not that good. It's really not that good. And I don't get it. I don't. I understand uh, you know, like the the significance of Mario sixty four, but as a game, I want to play. I really think if you don't have nostalgia for it, it's bad. It's really bad. And partially, uh, the problem with me is I played Banjo Kazooie, the good one, which is way better than any of these games I'll talk about today, except for maybe Bayonetta. Uh, I played that recently, Rare Replay, and I played that before. I played Mario 64 ever. On the N64, I played a ton of Banjo-Kazooie. Never played Mario 64 besides the first level at the time. And, like I said, Rare Replay went back and played Banjo-Kazooie. It's still phenomenal. It is still an amazing game. Went back and played this game. Wanted to kill someone. It is not a good game. This is not very good. Oh, I'm racing snow. This is You can't even move here. I'm hopping and skip. Not fun. Oh, that's so much fun, Nintendo. So much fun. Oh, I loved it. Oh, you popped me out into the into the world map? Go fucking kill yourself. I can't. I can't. I can't with Mario 64. It's, ab it's absurd. It is absurd. That game is not very good. Now, what could quite possibly be at the top of this list, right? What is the worst 3D platformer of all time? Now, I'll give you a hint, and I gave the hint earlier, actually. It involves a 3D platformer that tries to not have 3D platforming and introduces a really terrible mechanic. And that is... Banjo-Tooie. Again, good lord. Why? There's these first-person shooter segments where you're in this, I don't know, Doom? Uh, like, 
weird rooms and you're trying to you're holding kazooie and shooting shit and you're trying to find things in this maze which again you can't tell where you are there's nothing here to really tell you where you are you gotta jab the thing they're all timed in some weird way they're infuriating and they're all over the place in this game and it it is the problem with this game. Oh, let's give you 1,600 fucking missiles to shoot out of your stupid bird mouth. And then all these garbage first-person shooter segments. What is wrong with you? Who thought this was okay? It's not even like, oh, I want my game to stay the same, right? I, want, I don't want my games to be different. I, don't, I want the sequel to, to venture too far away. No, I'm fine with that. Do your game, right? But you didn't make this good. <laughs> like, you, you neglected to make the first-person shooter parts of Banjo-Tooie actually enjoyable. That's where I draw the line. You weren't making a good part of the game. I, I cannot fathom for a second that you thought this was on par with anything else in the game. And I don't even like a lot of this game. This is by far the worst part of the game. And, and I mean, even other parts of Banjo-Tooie, the more I played it, like I kept trying to give it a chance and I, I forced myself to really, to beat it, right? To get all the way through and it's just not very good. It really isn't very good game. It's just like, oh, it's such a fucking mess. I hate it. And this is exactly the problem. These first person shooter timed mazes where you literally have to learn the environment by just like, I guess I'll just take all right turns. I don't know. I have no clue. Oh, I have to find six of these things. There's no way to find it. I know they're optional, but that does not excuse how terrible they are. That does not excuse one second of that. They're horrifyingly bad. Thankfully, nothing in ukulele is this horrifyingly bad. Be uh, because, I mean, some of the reviews on the internet might make you think that, but wow. Did we not get Tui? And I'll talk about that in a second, but damn. I mean, that's it. That's my, my top five... Uh, worst 3D platforms of all time. Three of them are Banjo-Tooie. Um, because like I said, I, I tried to make a top five like good ones. I couldn't think of five. I mean, Psychonauts, I guess, Banjo-Kazooie. I'm drawing, I mean, Mario Galaxy. Mario Galaxy 2. I mean, at that point, the list is goofy. So I decided to do worst and then I, I couldn't make worst either. These are all jokes. I mean, I'm not... I don't actually think Mario 64... Actually, Mario 64 is kind of bad. Um, get Turn those rose-tinted glasses off. You know, Mario 3 is also not that great either, while we're talking. While we're talking about Mario. Oh, this is so much fun. I'm whacking... I'm whacking dynamite with my shitty little bird face. Unbelievable. Ba -da -ba -ba. Ba -da -da -ba -da -ba 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 Ow, damn. My thumb just fell off. That's not good. So, let's talk about the big thing for me this week. Ukulele. I am a Kickstarter backer for ukulele, and barring the super annoying Kickstarter message they sent out that was like, oh yeah, um... If you, we're going to send out download codes soon, and they never did, and I had to wait for the actual game to release. Whatever. Fine. Whatever. Barring that, I love ukulele. I think it's really, 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 really good. There are a lot of caveats with that, though. Um, in particular, like I kind of mentioned earlier in the show, I played Rare Replay, what was it, a year and a half ago, and I played through Banjo-Kazooie, one of my favorite games of all time. I played through 100% of the game without a guide because I've done it like 16,000 times. Love that game. I did that recently, right? And I enjoyed that recently. I still really enjoyed that recently. So I'm fine going into a game like this and, and you know, playing 
a 3D platformer from 1999, right? And that's what it is. And it doesn't necessarily change or improve much, I would have to say, but I don't think it needs to. Like, the camera's fine. I think that there's a few areas where the camera's weird, but I, I think they patched any problems they had prior to release. And now that's fine, right? The, the camera works fine. The game overall is fine. There are a lot of complaints I heard too about uh, the casino world is what people said and uh, being bad. And I really enjoyed it. You know, I enjoyed every single world in the game there of which there are five, which is a low number. And, and we'll get into that, I, I guess in a second. And they're all, they're all themed, right? So this is the jungly place and it's got temples and stuff. And this is the snowy level. And this is the intro that's overly long. Um, and then what is it? The little swamp that's kind of spooky, but not really that spooky. And then what is it? The uh, casino and then the space adventure whatever place. And that's all cool, but none of them really, to me, are super, super memorable in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I'll, I'll equate it to Banjo-Kazooie. The first world of Banjo-Kazooie is only memorable to me because I've played the game 20-something times, um, and it's the first part of it, right? But as a as a cornerstone of that game, of like, oh, remember that world? It's not there. Like, you remember Treasure Trove Cove, which is the second world, or you remember Bubble Gloop Swamp, or you remember, like, Clanker's Cavern, uh, or the uh, Click Clock Wood at the very end. Or Rusty Bucket Bay. I'm basically naming all the Freeze Easy Peak, Mad Monster Mansion. I, oh, what's the oh, what's the name of uh the, the desert one? Gobi Desert. I don't know. The desert one. I'm not a huge fan of. But like Freeze Easy Peak, one of my favorite levels in any a game like this. And I don't think any of the levels here really reach that to me. And there are only five of them. Now it should be mentioned they're expandable, so you go into them. They have their little stuff and whatever. And then you expand them with pages, which are jiggies. There's a, there's a, a banjo equivalent in this game of everything. Um, you expand them and it's different. Like the first world, oh, here's this tower now is giant. And here's this other platform you can go on. And um, the second world has two locked doors that unlock and there's like a whole castle over there for you to explore which is full of things like it's not a, a the expansions aren't small the third world's expansion adds a bunch of stuff same with the the fourth one which the fourth one didn't really add that much unless i missed it which is possible it's kind of dense um and confused maybe that's why people don't like it um and then the fifth one adds a bunch of stuff like that too like they they really add a lot and and it never to me felt like banjo tooie where i was lost and confused in these worlds and didn't know like why or where to go or, or like where like what the fuck am I even doing like, it always felt open enough where I could see everything go okay I haven't been over there I have been over there let me explore and it really is the game for for that type of game or me where you go into a level and like okay I'm gonna explore every single path here and I'm gonna go to the end of of this mountain and jump all of it and see what's over there and and enjoy that entire experience and see like, oh, is there a pagey over here? Oh, okay, there is, or oh, there isn't. Uh, maybe this gets expanded later and sometimes it does, but oftentimes it doesn't. And you're meeting all these characters and the characters aren't as amazing as uh, Banjo-Kazooie or even Banjo-Tooie characters. I was looking at a character sheet of Banjo-Tooie and I was like, I remember a lot of these guys. Like this game, I don't know. There's like some pigs and they're dumb and there's like the shopping carts. Those are funny, I guess, but they're not super memorable character there's never there's the scientist who's kind of like um what's his face the shaman guy i forget his name oh well so it's getting old <laughs> i guess uh not as remember memorable as him who i forgot his name of so is he even memorable at all uh mumbo mumbo jumbo there he is memorable and i forgot his name but like that aside they're still interesting they're still cool the worlds are still giant and beautiful just beautiful it's so cool to see this style which is not done like ever nowadays this weird cell shading 3d platforming style it, it's gorgeous i love how it looks and it runs super well i'm playing on pc um that's all fine 
and they never get that's what i was going they never get all uh like bogged down with a bunch of crap like tui it a lot of the levels and maybe to their detriment to some people feel very uh sectioned off or or almost hub worlds in their own right where like oh this is the central place i'm going and then there's this linear path that goes that way and then back this one that way and back that way and back that way and back like so it it's section especially stuff like the casino it's just a bunch of rooms along the side of the casino and the middle of the casino so you can just go and do all the rooms on the side and then go back like you're not gonna get lost because it's a linear it just loops you back to where you were and and that's nice it's super great for exploring it does things that banjo Tui did poorly like the dinosaur world where you kept going into doors and I didn't know where the hell I was ending up or where I was going and all these strange directions. It doesn't have the super annoying garbage from Tui where like a train comes in. You're like, you gotta get me on the train. And then you move them over the train to the other train track. I'm like, this is stupid. Why is this here? I don't like puzzles like this. Uh, for the most part, I really like a lot of the puzzles. I think Trousers right here, or Trouser, not Trousers, uh, is one of the few really super memorable characters. But the puzzles are not as obtuse for the most part. You should be able to, if you played games like this, which I don't know why you bought it if you weren't, but maybe uh, if you played a game like this before, you've you've explored things like this. You've solved these puzzles. You know, like, oh, I'm going to hit that with this. And it becomes later on where you're like, oh, that this is going to sound really weird, but there's glass that you can break and then there's ice that you can burn. And they look very similar <laughs> like it's like a block of ice on something and i'm like trying to burn it and it's not working uh, or it'll be uh it'll be glass and i'm trying to do the thing that breaks the glass and it's like oh no that's ice the fuck is this but that brings me to the to the new moves right they got rid of that stupid garbage in tui where you got 16 different types of things but they added it in in a smart way where you can lick your little tongue because you're a chameleon thing and you get those abilities and you can spit you could lick the grenade plants and then you can have grenades and those blow up blocks and you can you have to run where you need to go with the fire to light something on fire and then oh this platform is on fire so let me lick the water and i can shoot water it does that super smart loved that and there's also other things too because you're a super awesome chameleon you, one of the abilities you get is turning invisible um, there's a there's a bunch of abilities like that and the other thing you can do with your little tongue man man is Oh, the cool health mechanic where the butterflies, if you lick them, they heal you. Like, if you eat them, they heal you. If you just run into them, they restore your little power bar uh, stamina. So things like rolling around on ukulele to move quickly uses stamina. The invisibility uses stamina, stuff like that. And the stamina recovers after kind of a cooldown. And that that's a much better system than uh, ammo. Or like the grenade stuff that you lick the plants, that's limited time. So you can just go back and lick the plant. That works great. The other things you can lick are, are things like honey, which you can't shoot honey, but it coats your body. And now you can stick the things you couldn't stick to before. Or you can lick up these cannonballs, for some reason, cannonballs. And now you're heavy and wind won't blow you off of platforms. So that's for a little puzzle. Stuff like that is super awesome. And I loved finding new things and exploring and going into the world like okay i'm gonna lick this and jump over there and just the joy there's so many great moments of pure platforming jumping around solving its little like if i jump now okay like so 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 good i i think the transformations are overall pretty good they don't go crazy like tui did where like you can't leave the worlds with these transformations so that's i think an improvement overall um, it was never, I'm a washing machine. What does that mean? Well, now I got to walk over here and walk over here and walk over here and walk over here. It's, it's like each level ha has its own transformation and they also have like the transformation puzzles, I guess I could say it's like, Oh, I'm going to transform now and I'm going to do the three or four activities that I know of nearby that need the transformation. And that's super great way of handling it to me. It never felt overwhelming it was always the last thing i did in the world was i'm going to transform and see what this does and maybe i'm missing a bunch of things there are i think the most i have in a world is like 19 out of 25 of the pages um there are certain things i still don't know how to do how to collect some of the ghost riders which are the jinjo jinjos jinjo jinjo 
Um, I don't know how to collect all of them yet. I don't even know. I could beat the game. I don't know how to collect two of the colors of them. I don't, I just, you're just like, you got to figure out how to get them. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how to do it though. Oh, I might've figured out one just now. I'll try that. Um, that actually makes a lot of sense. And okay, but that still leaves one that I don't know. And so like one, you have to walk into one, you have to feed with anything, just feed it something. And then one, I have to chase and then the other two, I don't know. <laughs> one just keeps trying to fight me. I don't know what that means. Why is he so mean to me? Um, the other one, I think I might have figured out. But he hides. So that's that's a cool uh, change. And they make the little like, <laughs> I can't do it. It's like a really high-pitched squeaky noise that I can't do after talking for this long. Um, or maybe ever. When they're nearby. And it does, uh, speaking of sounds and stuff, sound effects, amazing. Music, fantastic. There's so many times in the music where it'll start doing notes that you're like, it's this from Kazooie or like, ah, it's doing the thing. And then it kind of deviates, but it's so cool. And it's, it's, it's banjo. It's banjo 3E music. Phenomenal, phenomenal work uh, on that. Um, I think, I guess we'll maybe move into criticism a little bit. It could use not a map, but it could use like a list of things I've accomplished in a world. So if I looked at the first world and it's just like hey you have this pagey you have the pagey for helping so and so like winning the race against the cloud man you got that one i would like that because at certain point have i beaten the arcade in this one i don't know did i i think i did and then you have to go into it and see and like oh i guess i yeah i, I did but you don't really know that there's no way to see if you've done it without going back to that and looking at it. So I, I kind of like that system. I don't necessarily want it to be, hey, you have an incomplete quest right here. Why don't you talk to Squiggly Man? I don't necessarily want that. I just want to know what I've accomplished so I can look at it and go, oh, there's probably something over there because I haven't accomplished anything over there. Kind of the inverse way of uh, explaining something to a player. Let's see, each, I have written down some notes over here. Each world take about four hours for me to fully explore, I would say, um, give or take. And uh, some, I kind of missed some things and, well, all of them, I missed some things. One world actually did get all of the quills, which are the notes. It wasn't even trying to, that does net you a pagey. That's cool, I guess. Um, and they don't seem very uh, difficult to find all everything like that it will be difficult without using a guide i think to find every single thing because there's 25 in each world and even though one is a minecart and the minecart's good but not amazing one's a minecart two are the retro arcade games which are kind of terrible or okay and some are decent but that's not really so that's another one. One is a pagey for all the Jinjo guys, and one is a pagey for all the notes or quills. So that's five pages. So it's really 20 pages for everything that's in the world, plus the expansion of the world. You're going to miss some things. <laughs> You're going to miss a few things. Um, I think uh, there are certain chameleon abilities that should have been used more, in my opinion, especially during... Uh, I guess I'll just skip to that. The final boss, which is terrible. Every single Banjo game has a terrible final boss. It's really kind of... I, I, I don't know if it's intentional. The first Kazooie, not very good. Kind of too long. Tui, borderline, I quit the game. It's so terrible. And I'd gotten that far, man. The final boss in banjo Tui is horrifyingly bad. Like, someone needs to be slapped. Like... How I Met Your Mother, slap bet slapped. This is not okay. The Banjo Tooie final boss is not okay. And this boss is also not great. Uh, it's very much memorize everything you have to do against it. And it starts doing these things. Like I got stuck at the very end because I didn't know what to do. Because it uses like it uses the same three or four moves. But you learn like 15 different moves, man. I would have loved to use some of those other moves instead of just using the invincibility shield or the shooting. Like I, you shoot fire and water and grenades and all these things in the game. And the final boss is like, oh, just shoot, just shoot frost in one stage of it. And I'm like, all right, I guess. Like, I think I, I could have used the boss to be half as long, but more interesting. If that makes any sense. Like it really... It, 
it's bad. And I, I think it took me an hour. It took me an hour <laughs> to fight the final boss five, six times. And even when you do it, even when you successfully beat the boss, that's still, it's still like a 10 minute fight. Crazy. I guess while I'm talking stats, I have my stats written down. Uh, 16 hours I put into the game. One hour is the final boss. <laughs> Uh, I got 100 pages, which is the minimum you need to get into the final boss. So I figured, okay, fine. I'll just do it now. And I, that was this morning. Um, 927 quills, which is out of, um, I think, 1100 something? Too much Jacob. Not enough Lele. Sorry, I didn't see that. Got distracted by ukulele. The, the reviews are very funny. I know what you're saying with the not enough water. The reviews are very, very funny because they're all over the place and it feels like there are problems with this game, but I think it's so solid and I, I really enjoyed my time with it. Like I wouldn't have put 16 hours in this stupid game if I didn't like it. I wouldn't have kickstarted it either. Um, also, I just mentioned 100 pages, that's out of 145. Too much payout, not enough net up. Man, I'm telling you. Ben is next. Ben is fantastic. Better than ukulele unfortunately um how many more of these are you gonna <laughs> are you gonna come back every with um i don't think i have another, a couple another notes da, da, da. oh they keep doing this thing they started doing this in tui as well where there's a lot of combat for no reason and it's not fun at all to do the combat in ukulele just like normal enemies they like these eyes will jump on objects in the world and then they'll like, oh, now it's a snowman with evil eyes. So the snowman's fighting you. Or now it's a it's a weird pumpkin. And now it's fighting you. Okay, that's cool. And I like that. That's an interesting idea. But fighting them is so annoying. It's not fun at all. Half the time they don't drop health. It's not beneficial to, for you to fight them anyway. So they're either super annoying to fight or they're just basic. I don't really understand kind of the, the motivation with all that. It's really strange to me i i don't know if i'll ever understand that um i that's that's my my note i'm like what's this about oh there's other bosses in the game too that's what's kind of frustrating about all the bosses because i mentioned the final boss being terrible but the other bosses are also kind of not great they do this weird thing where i think every boss does this that i that i played where i'm like am i doing this right i don't know and and then you get hit by things because not because you like ran into something, but because you can't turn. Like there's this one boss where you're fighting it in a transformation and you can't go backwards. You can only go forward. So you, you have to move out of the way, right? But you can't move out of the way because it's coming at you. So you're going to hit it. You either don't move and you get hit or you do move and you get hit because it's in the way and you can't turn around weird. Like, the, all of them kind of have that strange issue of like I understand this is a 3D platformer of an older era but you could kind of fix that a little bit yeah I think and I mean to be honest I kickstarted the game for it's like 35 euros or something I don't even know what that is and I got you know I got the toy box and all those garbage I got um a couple other rewards it was just the basic um it was like the basic plus thing but to me i love banjo i love those games i wanted to encourage this i didn't know when i kickstarted it would become like super insanely successful so like i didn't need to kickstart this but i wanted to play the the toy box really mainly that's why i did it and i i do agree with that because forty dollars is that even the price of the game i think it is um, it's hard to say when you buy a game two years ago, it's hard to say how much it really is. Um, you know, now, yeah, it is $40. I, I would say, but that's the thing. I got 16 hours worth of enjoyment on this. I'm not done with it. I'm going to go back into the worlds. Like all I did in that 16 hours was fully explore with my limited abilities, right? So you get new abilities in each world and you can use them in the previous one not to do a ton of stuff but there are things there or you'll just learn new mechanics like i've just learned how to pick up one of the stupid things that's in every level um i think maybe so there there's something to go back for i never did you know i did all the worlds and i beat the final boss and i need to go back into each world and kind of explore again there's also one section i completely missed um in the first world because i forgot about it 
So that's a couple pages right there. And that's, I think it's a lot of fun if that's the game. Like this is very much, if you don't think you're going to like this, you're probably not going to like this. Like it really is for Banjo-Kazooie fans. This is not for anyone else. Like this is very much, and maybe it is for other people. Maybe other people play it and like it. But if you're expecting Mario Galaxy or Psychonauts or like, you know, any, any of those games, it's really, no, it is Banjo 3E. Like, this is not anything else. It is not trying to be anything more. It's unabashedly that. Yeah, I think it is for it all. I think you're right. Um, I think uh, on a Steam sale or, a, you know, PSN sale or whatever, $30 is fair. I think $40 is a little high for a game like this. $20 is, like, super good deal, I think. $20, you, you should pick this up if you liked those games in the past or you like 3D platformers or you're waiting for Mario Odyssey to come out. It, it totally works for that. Um, what else about the prize? I was going to say something about the prize. Well, I don't know. The train of thought goes away. It's got great design of these super lush environments. That's one of those things that you see at the very beginning and you don't know how to get to it. It's also one of those things that looks like ice but isn't ice. There's a ton of shit like that in the game. Like, this guy's stuck in ice. Let me run and get the fire. And I get the fire. And it's not ice. It's it's glass, which is stupid. Why does glass and fire look so similar in your game? Whatever. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. I was listening to a, another review. And uh, the reviewer mentioned that she played it for like 16 hours like I did. And had half as much stuff as I did, you know, to get the 100 pages. So it seems like if you're someone like me who's like super into these games, you're going to burn through it a lot more quickly. Uh, if you're not just trained to run around like a buffoon and look in every nook and cranny and know kind of what the game's telling you, this could really be a long game. Like there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, that being said, you might be annoyed by some of the things in it. Um, there are bad, like bad bosses, bad missions. Where I'm like, I don't like the minecart stuff very much it just it just starts being super annoying and there are certain things too and i'll read your comment in a second but there there are certain things where the game is like oh here's a mini game okay fine and i have to play the mini game for three or four minutes and then it's like here's a pagey and you want to beat the high score that's worth a pagey too and i'm sitting here going no i don't I don't want to play your terrible mini game. I didn't want to play it in the first place. There's one I, I quit playing. I quit playing because I died two minutes into it. And I didn't want to do it again. Like I just had to survive for who knows how much longer, but I don't want to play the, the game. Like there's, there's a few things. That's why I don't think I'll ever hundred percent. This game is it's just, there's too many things. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do it. The fourth levels minecart level. I don't want to do it. I try, I tried it for like 15, 20 minutes to do it. I don't want to like there are there are several things like that and they're all optional most of the main platforming stuff isn't like that it's the weird mini game stuff that is just not good um just not good oh wow a spyro hd or a gex collection a gex collection i think is really out of the question uh i don't think that's ever going to happen but a spyro maybe I mean, we're getting we're getting uh, Jack and Daxter. We got Banjo or Crash Bandicoot. I always it's like a short circuit in my brain. I always call him Ban Banjo because that's the B name I'm thinking. But Crash Bandicoot coming out in uh, like two months, so it could it could happen, but it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be PlayStation. It would be Activision, who owns Spyro, and that'd be that'd be weird because he's been all over the place now. But maybe it would be another. It'd be multi or something. They could do it. It's possible, but I don't know. It also feels really late. But I guess Crash Bandicoot's also super freaking late. This is the first world of the game, and this is me uh, racing against Doofus Man, the cloud. It's not... It's fine. I fail a couple times. I'll be honest. I fail a couple times at this. Because it... it... <laughs> This is one of the other things, like the hit detection on these little butterflies, you'll see it where I'm rolling around. You have to collect the butterflies to re, uh, restore your stamina bar, right? But the hit detection for them is so not lenient 
that I'm rolling like right next to them and it doesn't give it to me. But the whole mini game hinges on not running out of stamina. So it's, it's weird little things like that. Just this kind of annoying frustration in certain respects. As much as I, as much as I really do love the game, I, I do think it's fantastic. That's to me. And, and overall, I, I'm using that as like, I can look past the faults. I can like, eh, I don't really care about that. Let's just ignore that. But looking at it kind of as a whole, there are a lot of warts along the side as much as I enjoyed uh, playing it. And it's also like this roll move is not the talent trot from Banjo Kazooie. It is not. You're, it, that move, the talent trot is so much better in Banjo Kazooie. You can control it, it's quick, agile, it does a little wee jumping noise. That's great. This rolling thing is kind of all over the place. And especially at the beginning of the game, I felt like I was rolling all sorts of directions. Like it can turn on a dime almost, but sometimes it can't. It's just, that's the thing. But sometimes it doesn't work is the entire ukulele experience. Sometimes it doesn't work. That's not a good endorsement, to be honest. I did this race several times. I did it probably too many times. But where's the where's the butterfly? There they are. They're coming up. I I didn't get it. How did I not get the butterflies? You saw I was walking right in them. It's stupid. It's dumb. I don't like it. I'm moving on. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of this stupid ukulele land. I think this review's been like thirty minutes now. Unbelievable. I forgot to record things, too. Well, that's too bad. That's funny. I forgot that. <laughs> Okay, moving on to Bayonetta. Now, I love, 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 love Bayonetta. And it kind of somewhat as a surprise came out on Steam this last week. Uh, there was that weird game they did put out that was free about a week ago. It was 8-bit Bayonetta. Um, Sega did, and that's cool. And I didn't play it, and I didn't care. And But it had this leaked thing at the end after you do it, and like a little viral marketing thing, to get to this a countdown for Bayonetta 1 on PC. And I've played a couple hours of the game. I'm skipping all the cutscenes. Uh, so I'm a little further than maybe a couple hours should be. This game is still so, so phenomenally good. I love everything about this game. Like, the style of everything. The way she does all this dumb shit in the cutscenes that I have seen. That are jumping around and, and doing these poses. There's references to Beautiful Joe everywhere, which is, I love. And the combat, as soon as you start getting weapons, like the combat's good and you're really enjoying it and you, you like how different combos end with like a giant foot stomp or a big punch of hair or whatever. And then it goes into, oh, now you have a sword and now you have a whip and now there's claws and oh, here's the twist. You can put the claws on your feet and you start mixing all these weapons and it, the joy of this game is still there. And on PC, this is the best way to play the game it runs really really damn well um even you know 4k down sampled to 1080p which i played like that for a while even just the loading time, like the loading times alone which i guess you could see right here there's a loading time and it's done that's the loading time. <laughs> this is a game that used to have kind of annoying wait around you could you could actually do moves you could do a couple moves in the loading screen now you can't 
So I just want to make a quick thing to talk about Bayonetta on PC. It's phenomenal. Everyone needs to buy this. It's $20. This, I need to, I want Sega to be encouraged. We need Bayonetta 2 on PC, maybe. That might not be a thing that's possible uh, given Nintendo's involvement, but Bayonetta 3, that is what I want. Bayonetta 3, that's what we need because everything about this is still so much fun. Doing combos, having to dodge, learning all the different movesets. Like, this game, above a ton of other action games, really has makes the enemies characters like oh i'm fighting that guy i know exactly what to do if i do this move and i dodge here that's perfect and you can take their weapons and do different combos with those and how like the sword on in your hands and the claws on your feet do different attack styles so so phenomenally good this game is a delight it does crazy weird shit too you're walking on walls and now you're fighting in a circle and you're you can go all around the little, you're climbing up a tower, but you're on the outside of the tower, so you're climbing up it, and you can go around the circle, and you're fighting things in it, and the bosses are gigantic. Oh, the bosses are small, and these intense one-on-one, -on -one, you versus whatever her name was, I forget. Battles are just fantastic. They really nailed it with this one, and there's not really a bad thing I can say about Bayonetta 1. Um, I guess... The geometry is a little dated. Like, it looks great. It really does look great. But the geometry is dated. And that's unfortunate. But, I mean, what, whatever. What are we going to do about that? The game's phenomenal. Everyone needs to play this game. Do whatever you have to do. I need more Bayonetta. Because I'm, I'm playing Nier. And I love Nier. But as a combat system. And the combat in the game. It's just fine. It's pretty good. It's actually really good overall but man the move sets the fluidity the dodging the different weapons the different combos like there's so many different combos this is why i complained so much about uh the dmc reboot was it was like oh here's four different combos like for everything it's just heavy heavy it's like heavy 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 light 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 heavy heavy light like, like it was like such a rudimentary system but this is like like six punches in a row and then a kick or like kick 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 punch kick kick punch and it's like all these weird things and they're all fun like even if you, you don't have to memorize combos but you can kind of start to and they're all fun to do and there's so many different types of them and you're dodging knocking things in there moment to moment this game is fun to play skip all the cutscenes if you want there's kind of too many and I'm skipping them all, and I'm fighting all these weird dragon demon dogs, and I'm not maybe not that great because I haven't played the game in forever, but so, so, so good. So, 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 so. Am I talking into the mic? So good. So good. Hopefully next week I'll have this set up where I don't have the mic like this because I need to move everything around, and that requires a lot of garbage and blah, 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 blah. But first, this show Every Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific Time, twitch.tv slash thegamefanatics. Hopefully, maybe next week I can gush more about Bayonetta, because good lord. This isn't a review. I guess I should call it a review. It's a review. The game's still great. Review over. Even, like, the style, the presentation, everything about this. Top quality. Top, 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 top quality. Just, just great. I will say, even though I'm a big fan of it, it does have a little bit of a slow start. You can kind of see some weird issues and some weird weirdness in it. But I don't think so. I think you can get over that. I think there maybe might be a pacing problem for people. But I remember playing it. I remember getting to this level in particular. You get the sword. Shit starts hitting the fan. And it's fantastic. So that's it. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Good. I, for I didn't forget to change it to Bayonetta. I would forgot a lot of things today. I shouldn't have, but I didn't forget that one. That's how you unlock new weapons. There are so many new weapons. Like, it's one of the rare games where when I beat it the first time, I immediately went back and started playing it again. Like, oh, I'm going to unlock all the weapons. I'm going to have ice skates on my feet and chainsaws on my hands. Like, this is some cool shit. And it, it, it goes there. It goes there with crazy weapons. And I love that. The combat system, 
after playing a couple hours of this, I don't think they've made a better one. I do not think so. And now I haven't played Korra or TMNT or the Transformers. But I don't think I need to. I really don't. If I did, more people would be talking about those games. <laughs> but no, they're talking about Bayonetta. Okay, why is that? Because it's the best one. And it's damn good. Except for this part where I fuck it up. That's not as good. <gasps> Alright, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Is that how I end this? Happy Easter. Oh, it is Easter. Happy Easter, I guess. I don't know. Do whatever you gotta do. For the eggs. I don't know. It's all for the eggs. <laughs>